Dear children, come back to online classes. Today in history we are going to see the topic cotton mills come up. This topic is of chapter 6 of history. So the first cotton mill in India was set up as a spinning mill in Bombay in 1854. From the early, early 19th century, Bombay had grown as an important port for the export of raw cotton from India to England and China. It was close to the vast black soil which is very, which is very useful for growing cotton. So it was close to the vast black soil tract of western India where cotton was grown. When the cotton textile mills came up, they could get supplies of raw material with ease. So they can get raw materials very easily because the vast black soil track of western India provided cotton, growth of cotton. Then By 1900, over 84 mills started operating in Bombay. Many of these were established by Parsi and Gujarati businessmen who had made their money through trade with China. Mills came up in other cities too. The first mill in Ahmedabad was started in 1861. A year later, a mill was established in Kanpur in the United Provinces. Growth of cotton mills lead to a demand for labor. So, after setting up of these cotton textile industries, these cotton mills want more labor for the growth of these mills. Thousands of poor patients, artisans and agricultural laborers moved to the cities to work in the mills. In the first few decades of its existence, the textile factory industry in India faced many problems. It found it difficult to compete with the cheap textiles imported from Britain. In most countries, governments supported industrialization by imposing heavy duties on import, eliminated competition and protected infant industry. Infant industry is one that is new and it's in its early stages of development. The colonial government in India usually refused such protection to local industries. The first major spurt in the development of cotton factory production in India, therefore, was during the First World War when textile imports from Britain declined and Indian factories were called upon to produce cloth for military supplies. So here in this paragraph we have seen heavy duties on imports. In most countries, government supported industrialization by imposing heavy duties on imports. So heavy duties means a duty which can refer to either in a form of taxation that is imposed on imported goods. Now let us see the sword of Tipu Sultan and Woods Steel. So here in the picture which you are seeing, this is Tipu's sword made in the late 18th century written with gold on the steel handle of Tipu's sword was where quotations from the Quran with messages about victories in war now let us see the story of Indian steel and iron metallurgy by recounting the story of Tipu Sultan who ruled Mysore till 1799 he fought four wars with the british and died fighting with his sword in his hand tipu's legendary swords are now part of valuable collection in museums in england but 
Do you know why the sword was so special? The sword has an incredible hard and sharp edge that could easily rip through the opponent's armor. Had an incredible hard and sharp edge that could easily rip through the opponent's armor. Rip means to tear and armor means a covering worn as to protect against weapons usually in the battlefield. The quality of the sword came from a special type of high carbon steel called woods which was produced all over South India. So carbon steel, high carbon steel, carbon steel has a higher carbon content which gives the steel a lower melting point, more malleability and durability and better heat distribution. Wood steel when made into swords produce a very sharp edge with a flowing water pattern. This pattern came from a very small carbon crystals embedded in the iron. Francis Buchanan who toured through Mysore in 1800 a year after Tipu Sultan's death has left us an account of the technique by which wood steel was produced in many hundreds of smelting furnaces in Mysore. So here smelting means the process of obtaining a metal from rock or soil by heating it to a very high temperature or of melting objects made from metal in order to use the metal to make something new. So furnaces, here furnaces means a furnace is a container or enclosed space in which a very hot fire is made for example to melt metal. In these furnaces iron was mixed with charcoal and put inside some small clay pots. Through an intricate control of temperatures the smelters produced steel ignots that were used for sword making not just in India but in West and Central Asia too. Woods is an Englished version of the Kannada word Huku, Telugu Huku and Tamil and Malayalam Uruku that is meaning steel. Indian wood steel fascinated, fascinated European scientists Michael Faraday, the legendary scientist and discoverer of electricity and electromagnetism, spent four years studying the properties of Indian woods that is from 1818 to 1822. However, the wood steel making process which was so widely known in South India only was completely lost by the mid 19th century. So why this is so? Because the swords and armor making industry died with the conquest of India by the British and imports of iron and steel from England displaced the iron and steel produced by craftspeople in India. Then abandoned furnaces in villages. Production of wood steel required a highly specialized technique of refining iron. But iron smelting in, industry, in India was extremely common till the end of the 19th century. In Bihar and central India in particular every district had smelters that used local deposits of ore to produce iron which was widely used for the manufacture of implements and tools of daily use. The furnaces were most often built of clay and sun-dried bricks. The smelting was done by men while women worked the billows. Billows is a device or equipment that can 
pump air the bellows pumping air that keep the charcoal burning then by the late 19th century however the craft of iron smelting was in decline in most villages furnaces fell into disuse and the amount of iron produced came down why was this so the one reason was the new forest laws which was made by the colonial government that is when the colonial government prevented people from entering the reserve forest the iron smelters find very difficult to get wood for charcoal and also iron ore so defining defying forest laws they often entered the forest secretly and collected wood but they could not sustain their occupation on this basis for long many gave up their craft and looked for other means of livelihood in some areas the government did grant access to the forest but the iron smelters had to pay a very high tax to the forest department for every furnace they used so this reduced their income moreover by the late 19th century iron and steel was being imported from britain iron smiths in india began using the imported iron to manufacture utensils and implements this inevitably lowered the demand for iron produced by local smelters by the early 20th century the artisans produced iron and steel faced a new competition so children for today up to here only and tomorrow we are going to start the new topic that is iron and steel factories come up in india thank you children